Hello, this is Tim Rogers, and you are watching Kotaku.com. Final Fantasy VII was released 20 years ago. I lived in Japan for 10 years shortly after that. You can live in Japan for 10 years too. Just go there and then stay there for 10 years. I'm playing Final Fantasy VII in Japanese for the first time. This is part 5 of my series comparing the Japanese and English scripts. I'm noticing a trillion tiny little differences. I'd like to share a billion of those with you. Unfortunately, I only have time to share a million, so let's get to it. First off, I'd like to thank our friends at thelifestream.net for providing the English footage. When we last left Cloud, Barrett, and Tifa, they stood before Shinra Tower, on the verge of a groundbreaking, landmark video game set piece. They're here for revenge, and to rescue Arisu from an experimental laboratory. Barrett, being a lovable optimist and now apparently a Buddhist, must believe pretty strongly in karma because he's willing to bet on the group's safety if they rush in the front door. Tifa suggests a more tactical alternative, take the stairs. You literally climb 60 flights of stairs. This was incredible in 1997. 60 flights of stairs with no battles, just a whole darn bunch of dialogue, in which Barrett bickers with Tifa about the stupidity of the stairs. If you study the Japanese version, Tifa will teach you a dozen different ways to say shut up. Spoilers, the easiest one is urusai, which amounts to you just literally speaking the adjective noisy by itself. However, I want to zero in on one particular line. Barrett, tired from climbing 50 flights of stairs, exaggerates his exhaustion as being tantamount to a near-death experience. He soliloquizes to his far-off daughter Marlene, whose name is actually Marin in Japanese, by the way. Marlene, Daddy wanted to see your face one more time. To which Tifa replies, yeah. Tifa, come on, buddy. That ain't cool. In Japanese, Barrett's soliloquy reads pretty much exactly the same. Tifa's response, however, is, Engi demo nai koto iwanai no. Engi demo nai koto iwanai is an idiomatic expression. We can only interpret one meaning from it, therefore. It means, don't say such a thing. The emphasis is on the word, Engi demo nai, which means, something which is not a sign of good fortune. You use this idiomatic expression expression to tell someone they're being pessimistic, and that such pessimism is the root of misfortune. I'm going to guess that the translator didn't have the same idiom dictionary in 1997 that I bought when I moved to Japan in 2001. Maybe that dictionary hadn't even been published yet. Shinra Tower is dense and huge. A lot happens in here. There's drama, intrigue, mystery, battles, puzzles, plot revelations, and character development. I'd end up literally 50 years old if I took the time to answer everyone's questions about Shinra Tower, so in the interest of fairness, let's focus only on the following idiotic things that I personally find hilarious. Our heroes, in order to eavesdrop on a Shinra board meeting, must enter an air duct by first summiting a toilet. In English, the dialogue box before the toilet contains a comedy option, flush. In Japanese, it's either more or less comedic depending on your personal taste. The option is kitanai kara nagasou ka. It's dirty. So shall we flush it? Right there, in plain Japanese, is a clear indication there's probably a turd in the toilet. Or maybe it's urine, I don't know. There is excrement of some sort inside this toilet. I can't overstate how big of a discovery this is for me. Well, it's probably not as big a discovery for me as it was for Cloud. Kaboom, great joke. I find this perfectly hilarious. It's an option in a menu, though it's unlikely that the game is insinuating that the characters are having this conversation. It's like the game itself is having this conversation with Cloud as he has it with himself. Also, whoa, they just have one restroom. It must be gender neutral. That's progressive. Way to go, Japan. On floor 66, we meet Midgar's mayor, a man whose name is Domino. The game is unclear whether that's his first name or his last name. Domino's assistant, who is standing outside of the mayor's office, is named Hart in English. Well, in Japanese, his name is Hato. Hart would be Hato. So it's, it's clearly Hato in Japanese, which is either hat or hut. So like, look, these two guys are named Domino and Hut, and Barrett previously referred to Midgar as a pizza. The city of Midgar is literally a circle divided into eight triangular segments. The city is, in fact, a pizza, and the creators of the game are acknowledging this. So, yes, it's Mayor Domino's Pizza and his assistant Pizza Hut, both chains that deliver pizza in Japan. The translator really missed the reference. Maybe the dairy farm he grew up on was too far away for delivery from a Domino's or Pizza Hut. And by the way, if if you wanted to say Pizza Hat in Japanese, because why wouldn't you? It'd be pronounced exactly the same way as Pizza Hut. Pizza Hatto. Pizza Hatto. Because Japanese has exactly five vowels. Before you say, Well, English only has five vowels. Just stop, man. Watch the classic Academy Award winning film My Fair Lady, in which the character Professor Henry Higgins illustrates that English has approximately 130 vowels. Japanese has a, i, 
Oh, English is like a If you speak English, congratulations. You have like 125 vowels too many. In an experimental laboratory where we rescue Arisu, we meet Red 13, a talking monster of some sort. He's a test subject and is not attached to the name Red 13, so he lets us name him whatever we want. Here I just want to point out that the Japanese name entry character set includes one Roman numeral, 13, as a single letter simply for the purpose of naming this character. Neat. Our escape attempt gets our heroes into trouble. They get thrown in jail. Along the way, we learn that Arisu is the last of some ancient race called the Cetra, who were the true masters of the planet way back in forgotten times. Well, in the middle of the night, Sephiroth shows up, unlocks Cloud's jail cell, and kills everyone in the building. A scene of masterful environmental storytelling ensues. Sephiroth has killed the president of the Shinra Company. The president's son, Rufus, shows up on a helicopter. Before we go out to meet Rufus, each of our characters has a quip. They relate rumors they've heard about Rufus. I like Arisu's. I've heard that no one's ever seen seen him bleed or cry. The Japanese possesses a minuscule difference in nuance, which is a good example of how one goes about being effortlessly, naturally funny in Japanese. Chi mo namida mo nai, so kita koto arukedo. Super literally translated, that's, I've heard he has neither blood nor tears. Again, this is very subtle. I wouldn't even call it a difference. I might not have even translated it this way if I were translating this game myself. It's just, this is the cool way to say that in Japanese. Cloud battles Rufus while his friends escape. They regroup at the bottom of the tower. Barrett, Tifa, Erisu, and Red 13 boost a little tiny pickup truck. Cloud hops on a motorcycle and follows in an action game sequence that is incredibly hard to play if you forget to turn off the PlayStation 4 version 3. 300% speed boost function. Right before this, we get to see a cutscene. You know, when I first saw this cutscene, there was no way to rewatch it. There was no YouTube, there was no OBS, there was no Game Capture HD. All I had to do was wait 20 years, and now I can drop this scene into Adobe Premiere and step frame by frame in super slow motion through the sweet, gratuitous shot of Cloud descending a staircase in a motorcycle. Our heroes evade their motoring pursuers and decide to leave Midgar to find Sephiroth. Our heroes have an extremely big moment here at the gates of Midgar. We've spent the first lush, dense, character-packed 10-ish hours of this massive video game in this Blade Runner pizza metropolis. This will be our first time stepping out into the Japanese role-playing game world map. We get to talk to each of our characters on the way out. Right here, Eadisu calls Cloud bodyguard in English. She'd called him this earlier in Shinra Tower. In Japanese, she refers to him as Nandemoya-san. Demo, Nandemoya-san ga isho dashi, ne? Let's explain that. Nan or nani means what. Demo is a particle that indicates, well, it's complicated. Though if you add it to non, you get non-demo, which means anything, or sometimes it means everything. Ya is a suffix to place after the name of a type of item, making it a blank shop. Niku is meat, Nikuya is meat shop. San is a polite way to call someone Mr. So Eadisu calls Cloud Mr. Everything Shop. We can translate everything shop as Jack of all trades. This is a reference to the first significant conversation the two of them ever had, back in the church in the slums. Eadisu had asked Cloud what he did, and he said a little bit of everything. She giggled. She refers to him as Nandemoya-san throughout the rest of the game. So here at this emotional moment, in Japanese, Eadisu is calling back to their first conversation. I'm just gonna say that's pretty sweet. Romantic. Nice. After a quick walk in the fields, we arrive at Calm, a town that looks kinda like it was from a prototype of a different game. I love it. I love this about Final Fantasy VII. They apparently just made a whole bunch of art and then made a game out of it. I promise I'm not even being snippy when I say that. Our group meets up at the inn in Calm for a well-deserved rest. Man, I'd stay at this inn. I'd live there. While at the inn, Cloud tells Barrett Tifa, Erisu, and Red 13 everything he knows about Sephiroth. His recollection centers on an interactive flashback to an incident that occurred five years ago when Sephiroth and Cloud stopped at Cloud's childhood home, Nibelheim, to investigate a monster disturbance. This is the story of the day that Sephiroth went crazy, burned down a village, killed a bunch of people with his sword, and disappeared from the face of the planet. This flashback, like Wall Market and Shinra Tower, is a landmark video game set piece. This is, I'm gonna say, probably the most important and structurally interesting scene in the whole game. We are going to replay this flashback several times later in the game, each time learning new details. Based on the comments I've gotten on these videos, everyone knows the story of the game already, so I'm going to spoil it. Cloud is lying. Cloud was not a first-class soldier. He he was the scrub in the helmet who was getting motion sick on the truck. We're going to find this out much, much later in the game, and it will be presented in a positively Hitchcockian fashion. Cloud narrates the flashback while the player plays it, and the other characters
characters in the Inn at Calm in the present day timeline interject with questions. One splendidly playful moment is when the player directs Cloud to enter Tifa's house. Tifa then asks, Cloud, did you really go into my house? If you say yes, you get to keep looking around. I love this part. You can go into Tifa's room, open her dresser, and take out an item the English version calls orthopedic underwear. Tifa is then like, Cloud, did you really do this? And you have the opportunity to say yes or no. She responds with identical exasperation no matter how you answer. In Japanese, this item is called Chotto Senobi Pantsu. Chotto means a little bit, or slightly, or somewhat. Se means back, like the part of your body your back. Nobiru means to stretch, so senobi means to stretch your back. Most specifically, it indicates the sort of back stretch you would accomplish when standing on your tiptoes. Pantsu means pants, in the British sense. It, it means underwear. The translator seems to have interpreted the exact wording, little bit back stretch underwear, to mean that this garment's purpose is as some sort of spinal appliance, which stretches the wearer's back to correct some difficulty. Hence, orthopedic underwear. This is wrong, yet hilarious, and great. To describe something as a little bit senobi is to compare the thing to the actions of a child standing on their tiptoes, trying to appear taller, bigger, older, more mature. This is Cloud's memory of something that happened five years ago. He's looking back on it now, and he's thinking, those underwear were a little bit senobi. He's naming the item of the past while remembering it in the present, though, heck, he probably thought it then, too. In other words, Tifa, aged 16, was five years ago, wearing the sort of underwear you'd expect a fully grown adult woman to wear. So what kind of underwear is that? Sexy ones? They probably weren't sexy. I'm imagining they were like granny panties. Oh, wait, look at this image, courtesy of our friends at thelivestream.net. Thanks again for all your help, by the way, friends at thelivestream.net. This image comes from the item gallery on the bonus disc of the Final Fantasy VII International version released in Japan. It looks like Chotto Senobi Pantsu means sexy granny panties. So, is this Final Fantasy? Or Spinal Grantasy? Spinal Pantasy? Uh. Sephiroth finds a room full of Mako pods in which monster humans are mutating. Sephiroth sees the word Genova written above the door and, remembering the name of his mother, realizes that he too was probably made via a similarly sinister method. He goes nuts. He holds himself up in the biggest house in town. He reads a bunch of books. He decides to burn the village down. He kills everyone in the town, including Tifa's dad. Tifa takes Sephiroth's sword and attacks him in vain. Cloud moves her limp body aside. He rushes into the room. Sephiroth hugs his alien robot mom. Cloud vows vengeance. This scene. <laughs> Then Cloud's story ends. Somehow Cloud survived. The newspapers said Sephiroth died. Five years later, Sephiroth is back. The English translation does a pretty good job communicating Sephiroth's personality up to this point. He's not a totally aloof hard butt the way Cloud was at the beginning of the game. He's got some charm. During the scene in the library, before his rampage, Sephiroth snaps. Cloud enters the room and Sephiroth yells, Who is it? Then, acknowledging Cloud, he says, Hmm traitor. This confuses Cloud, who asks for clarification. Sephiroth explains that the humans stole the planet from the alien race who first populated it. He names himself the Revenger of the Dead Aliens, and declares all humans traitors which must be punished with death. I find no issue with the English translation, actually. I just want to point out that in Japanese, the most absolutely vanilla word possible for traitor is uragiri, which is literally the kanji for back and the kanji for cut. What I'm saying is, the default Japanese word for traitor is literally backstabber. Sephiroth is calling Cloud a backstabber. Sephiroth, buddy, you know what I always say? Don't knock it till you tried it. Will Sephiroth ever try it? Perhaps we'll find out in a thrilling future episode.